Today I want to talk to you about how you can move your author business forward every single day no matter how crazy your schedule is. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Yesenia from Writer Mom. It's just a place for writers who have other things going on in their lives besides just their author businesses. Um, and so it's for writers who want success in their author businesses but who don't want to just work um, to burn out constantly. Um, and so for me, that's like my kids and spending time with them. And then at the same time, working on my health, um, making sure I'm moving, um, eating healthy and that kind of thing. So you may have guessed from the name writer, mom, I'm a mom. <laughs> I have two kids. One of them is five. One of them just turned one last week. Both girls. They're wonderful. I love them. And, um, but it's been kind of crazy lately. <laughs> and if you're a parent, you probably know why. And it's because it's that time of year. It's back to school time. Um, here in Georgia where I live, uh, the kids started school on Monday and this whole week has just been exhausting. Um, even my five-year-old, I mean, she's, she's poor thing. I mean, she can, she's been so exhausted. She says so herself, she is so tired. We've all been so tired and just transitioning, you know, to back to school is always hard. And, um, you know, having to get up early again, not being able to sleep in, you know, for the kids going to school for seven to eight hours again, it's just, it's a lot. And then for me, getting her to school, picking her up, uh, you know, it's just a lot of energy. So I've just been so exhausted, which is why I thought today's topic would be especially relevant because this type of time of year always gets really crazy and it feels like it's all just, you know, school, 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 getting ready for school, picking them up from school, um, packing their things for school, uh, getting them in bed so that they can go to school the next day, you know, not too tired. So, so that's why I wanted to talk to you about this system that has been working for me um, and really helped me get a lot done and really move my author business forward since the beginning of 2014. So, and then before I get started, I just, um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you're here. Um, you know, how are you feeling and dealing with a back to school craze? Are you, do you love this time of year? You know, what do you love about it? Are you hating it? Are you exhausted like me? So just tell me in the comments, how are you feeling and dealing with the whole back to school time here in August? Okay. So like I said, just a minute ago, I have a system that I've developed that has really helped me move my author business forward in the last three years. So since then I've published seven books, almost eight. I'm wrapping up the eighth one um, as we speak. And, you know, that may not seem like a lot compared to the writers who can write and publish a book every month or two. You know, that's that's definitely like a whole nother level beyond me. I can't do that right now, but um, I am really proud of the almost eight books that I've published now in the last three years because I've had a ton of other stuff going on at the same time. So since 2014, I've also... I was in college during that time. Um, I've had two kids since then. You know, one is five, one is one. Not easy. Um, I've gotten married. We've bought a house and we've moved. Um, I've been a teacher, you know, especially first year teaching really hard and it takes up like all of your time. So even through all of that, I was able to write and publish seven books. And, you know, I've, I've seen my author business steadily grow at the same time. So that's why I wanted to share with you today, you know, what's working for me. And I think it'll be really useful and helpful to you, too. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay. And so, like I said, you know, I've had a lot going on. So this isn't like my author business. You know, it's been something that's important to me but it's not something that I've always been able to spend just hours and hours on because like I've had other things going on soccer practices and you know my school or my kids school and like other things going on so the important thing about all of this is that anybody can do it it doesn't take a whole lot of time to really be pushing your business forward every day okay Anybody can do it um, in just a few minutes a day. Um, you can really make a big difference for your business in six months or a year. And that's how I've been able to do it. Just a few minutes at a time here and there, uh, making time for my business among like the other things I have going on in my life. Okay, so basically what this is called is 
most important tasks. Sometimes I just think of it, think of it as MIT for short. Um, and basically what it's about is you're only focusing on these most important tasks um, whenever you sit down and work on your business. Um, for you, you may be you know, working on your business every single day. I usually do five or six days a week. So on those five or six days a week, I have a list with these most important tasks that I'm focusing on. You know, and it's just a few. Um, that's the important thing here. It's just the most important things that will actually move your author business forward. It's not 10 things. It's not 20 things. And believe me, I can be guilty of this because sometimes I feel like I have to be doing everything. And, you know, that's not true. You don't need to be doing everything. You don't need a to-do list that's like this long. You know, you can have all of those things that you need to do somewhere like in a sauna or some kind of to-do app or a written somewhere in a notebook. Just like all the things you know you need to get to eventually. But you don't want all of those things like on your daily, on today's to-do list because it's just going to overwhelm you and it's just going to feel like you're never going to finish. Okay. So again, not that many, only one to three, in fact, one to three is enough. Um, and that's just the right amount to where, you know, if you don't have a lot of time, uh, it's perfect. But at the same time, you're still going to be uh, making lots of really great progress for your business. Okay, so like what kind of things am I talking about here for most important tasks? Okay, this includes things like writing a first draft. Um, outlining a new book, editing a draft, scheduling a free promotion if we're talking marketing or emailing your list, you know, sending out a newsletter, um, trying to do that regularly. These kinds of things are the most important things that are going to grow your author business. So those are the kinds of things I'm talking about when I say, you know, most important tasks, like the most important, like, uh, these are things that when you do them, they actually move the needle for your business, okay? Like always putting out, you know, working on your next book, trying to get that out as soon as possible. And also, you know, some of those important marketing strategies like sending out a newsletter or scheduling promotions, okay? Hey, Thomas, good to see you here. We were just talking about how... Um, uh, how we can move our author business forward every day and I was saying how you know anybody can do it this is a good time to sum up anyway so anybody can do it doesn't matter how crazy your schedule is it just in just a few minutes a day you can move your author business forward just by doing a few things um, and the system that I use I just call it most important tasks and so I'm just focusing on one to three important tasks like writing like editing anything that you know will, will that will move the needle for my business, um, that's, that's what I'm going to focus on. Even if I just have a few minutes a, a day, if I can just spend 5 or 15 minutes editing my next book, which is what I've been doing lately, or sending out a newsletter, you know, you don't have to have hours and hours every day to be working on your author business. If you're like me and you have like other freelance work or a full-time job or kids or anything like that going on in your life, now, when I talk about these tasks, um, I'm not talking about tweeting, okay, Facebooking. I know those author groups and Facebook are a lot of fun, but you can waste a lot of time there. And a lot of times, you know, they're, they're not those things that you need to be doing that will really help your business grow, okay? It's good to hang out, like, if you have time at the end of the day once you've done your work, but you don't want to be in there all the time just kind of posting and commenting, because you don't want to sacrifice your valuable writing time. And then another one that I am super guilty of is just working endlessly on your author website. Like when I used to have a WordPress site, I just recently switched to Squarespace. And I would just be tweaking all the time. Oh, I don't quite like this, but I don't know enough code to like really make it look how I want. So then I'm like Googling for hours. Oh, and then I found this plugin. Oh, and now I like... I would just be there for hours. So you don't want to be doing these things that are like, it feels like you're working on your author business, but you're not really. So like I said, it should be things like writing, editing, scheduling a free promotion, emailing your list, things like that. Those should be in your one to three most important tasks. And then if you happen to have time 
to go update your author website real quick, then go do it. Okay, and then also it shouldn't be like an entire project on there because again, you don't want to be feel, feeling like overwhelmed. Um, it, it can be like a task from that project. Okay, so like if you know you want to outline your book, you know, maybe say, okay, I'm going to outline the book for 30 minutes or like a specific thing like, oh, okay, I'm going to come up with a first plot point today. Um, you don't want it to seem too big. Try to be specific. Okay, and then if you're like me, sometimes things get really crazy, like if there are extracurriculars going on or uh, when my kids get sick or there's like family stuff going on or if you're like inundated with freelance work or like your day job and things get really crazy, sometimes my most important tasks list will just have one thing and you know that may seem insignificant but it's really not like if I've had a really crazy day and I feel like I barely had time to breathe, but I was able to like cross off that important thing off my list and I know it's going to help my author business, like I feel great. So if all you can do is just one thing, like sit down and write for 15 minutes and add, you know, 400 words to your draft, like that's awesome. So definitely do that when life gets crazy, you know, whittle it down to like one, maybe two things. And then when things you know, settle down and you start to have more time, go back to your three big things. And if it happens to be like a great day, sometimes I'll do like an extra one or two and get ahead. That's always awesome. Okay. So some of you may be wondering, like, how do you actually make the time to do this? Like, okay, that's great. You can write down these three important tasks, but I have a day job. I have kids. Like I have like these other gajillion things going on. Like, how do you actually sit down and do it? Um, I also have a tip for you, uh, for that. Okay. And so what I do is, um, find little blocks throughout your day where you can fit these things in. So if you have a lot going on, look throughout, you might already have like one block, try to find another block or two, um, of time, five to 15 minutes where you can work on one of these tasks. So if you have two tasks, let's say, let's say that, you know, you need to do, let's say it's like write a book and send a newsletter um, for today. And that's what you need to do. Um, you know, let's say one, you need two 15 minute blocks for that. So one would be writing for 15 minutes and then the other 15 minute block, you're going to send that newsletter to your readers, notifying them about, you know, X, Y, Z. Okay. So if you already have one and you need one more block. Um, you know, look throughout your day, where can you fit that in? A lot of times we, we can make that time, but we don't always realize it. Um, so it could be like before you leave for work, if you have a daytime or if you freelance, before you start your work for the day, just sit down for like five to 15 minutes and work on something for your author business first. Like put that first and, and it, you're just going to feel awesome because you've already worked on your writing and the rest of the day just feels like a bonus. Like anything else that you do just feels like a bonus. Um, so that's one way is to like before you start your day, spend five to 15 minutes on these tasks. Um, and then you can check one off before you even really start your day. Um, another time that I do this is um, if the kids are taking a nap or after they go to bed at night. So once they're in bed and they're finally asleep, I'll just sit down at my desk for 15 minutes. Um, 10, 15 minutes and I'm working on that, on those most important tasks. You know, if I haven't had a chance to add new words to my draft all day, this is when I'm doing it. Um, and it's just, you know, five to 15 minutes, even if you're tired and you're, you're ready to go to bed, like it's not that much time. Um, and then another time that I do this sometimes is when the kids take a bath. So no, I don't leave them like in there by themselves, but, uh, you know, if I really haven't had a lot of time to spend writing or something, you know, I'll ask my husband to help me give the kids a bath. And so while he does that, that's a good 15 minutes that I can work on my author business. So I'll shut the door, he'll give them a bath, and, like, I can actually do a little bit of work. So is there anything like that in your day or in your week where uh, maybe somebody can come in and help you sometimes um, so that you have a little bit of extra time? You know, my husband can't do this every day because he works a lot of hours, but, you know, a few times a week, he'll help me with that. And then I can get a little bit of extra time if it's been kind of crazy throughout the day. Another time you can do this is before or after dinner. Sometimes, like, if I'm cooking chicken or something like that and I have a few minutes, like, I'll sit at the dinner table and I'll get out my computer and I'll work for, like, just five minutes really quick, you know. 
The little things like that add up throughout the day. So just think about like your day and your week, what go, what's going on with you. Where can you fit in these little 5 to 15 minute blocks where you can work on your 1 to 3 most important tasks. Okay. And then another important point here is to write them down so that you can keep track of them and you're looking at, you know, specifically what you need to do. Um, I've used Evernote in the past. It, that's a really good app for keeping track of these. And I just have like a little note every day of like three little checklists, like a checklist with three things on it. And, you know, as I do it, I'm just clicking check, check, check. And, you know, I just have one for every day. That's a good one. Or you can use something like Wonderlist or OneNote or something like that. Um, right now I'm using a planner that has like a little slot for every day. And that's really been helping me. I've loved going analog this year and actually crossing things off. You could also just use like a little notebook and have like a page for every day where you're writing down one to three MITs for you to do um, every day. And then cross them off. I I love crossing things off when I'm when I'm done because you know it, it's like, like it feels like the like a tangible it's like the tangible signal for me that I like I was productive. So okay, and then bonus points if you have a quarterly production plan that you're pulling all of these MITs from, because this means that you have like an overall plan and strategy for your author business. So maybe you have like a regular schedule, you know, for when you're releasing books or, you know, that you need to uh, send out a newsletter once a month. So this quarter, you know, just if you have a big plan like that where you can pull these tasks from, that'll make things a lot easier and you'll be, you know, you'll be making more progress consistently because you have an overall plan. Okay, so just to sum up really quick, again, we were talking about how to move your author business forward every single day, no matter how crazy your schedule is. Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to be hours and hours at a time if you have lots of stuff going on, whether it's a day job, whether it's kids, whether it's like other things going on in your life, freelance work, anybody can do it. Um, it just takes dedication. Um, I know I haven't always been perfect. There have been periods in the past where I've kind of just let my author business kind of go to the wayside and I'm just not spending any time writing or marketing or anything but whenever I have been dedicated and I use this system like I always make a ton of progress so you can do it too okay and so like I said for this MIT system you're gonna pick one to three things daily um, that that will actually move your business forward make sure it's not social media because you know, that's not the type of activity that's going to make a huge difference for your business. It should be things like um, uh, building your newsletter, scheduling a promotion, writing, editing, you know, working on, you know, when are you going to get out the next book? Um, okay. And then when life gets crazy, if, uh, if it's just one thing that you're doing a day, that's still a huge accomplishment. Look for little blocks throughout your day where you can work on these tasks in blocks of 5 to 15 minutes before work, after work, you know, when your kids are asleep, anything like that. Um, and then keep track of these in some sort of notebook or app um, so that you can see your progress and so that you know exactly what you need to do every day. Okay, so yeah, that's today's topic. I hope you really found it helpful. If you did, I hope you like or comment. And I want you to answer in the comments below, how are you dealing um, with the whole back to school craze, craze if you have kids? Um, and then, you know, what works for you when things get crazy? How do you make sure your, your author business is moving forward? So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And like I said, like, comment, or share if you found this video helpful. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye.